Hey guys, I just finished watching GoldenEye, which is of course the debut uh, Bond film for Pierce Brosnan and uh, is widely beloved and regarded as uh, the, the fan favorite among the fandom. Um, I, it's definitely one of my favorites. I'm not going to go and say it's a top five for me, which I'm sure it is for a lot of people. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to play a little bit of Contrarian in this, but not a lot. I still agree that it's really well done. Um, and Brosnan is a huge reason why uh, these Brosnan films work in particular because if it was a different actor, a weaker one, or less charismatic, it, it wouldn't really be the same. Like these three sequels that are coming after this one, they wouldn't work, period, if uh, Brosnan wasn't in them. So, yeah, um, GoldenEye. We're basically following Bond who uh, fails to uh, save his comrade in an opening mission sequence, which will be important later. And then uh, he also gets introduced to the new M, played by Judy Dench, who is my favorite M, personally. I don't mind the other two, um, but, I mean, come on, Judy Dench is very memorable and hard to forget. Um, she's got some great dialogue in this as well. So, and after that, she, he's given a new mission, which is to uh, investigate and shut down uh, the Golden Eye uh, space weapon that is held by the Russians. And uh, basically this device is an EMP uh, laser, it's like an EMP infrared laser gun that can globally shut down all s forms of technology and electricity, everything permanently and just wipe it off permanently basically. Uh, so it's very deadly in the wrong hands. And um, the Russians eventually want to decommission it just because, I, I actually forget why they want to decommission it. I think it's just because one of their programs got destroyed. So they, they just wanted to make sure there were no other loose ends or something like that. Um, but it's not important. What is important is that uh, when the, the Minister of Defense in Russia asks this uh, guy, I forget his name, the Russian colonel who's going rogue, if, any, if uh, GoldenEye has been shut down, he says yes, but that's not the case. GoldenEye is still active in another location, and uh, he conspires with a secret enemy who I won't spoil um, in uh, a master plan to... Basically, shut down the world's electronics, take all their money, and be the richest person on Earth. So, GoldenEye. It's a great film, right? So, it's got a pretty good Bond girl. It's got an amazing Bond actor, my third personal favorite one. Craig is first, Connery second, and then Brosnan's third for me. But, I mean, I kind of like this top three equally regardless. That's just, like, if I had to rank them. But, like, Brosnan... He's super fun. I really like watching his movies. He, again, his sequels aren't fantastic. Uh, but he does make them watchable. He absolutely makes them watchable. So, um, yeah, Brosnan's very good. Um, but uh, decent Bond girl, uh, decent villains. I think maybe the secret villain's a little bit too overhyped. I think the first time you watch this film, it's probably, like, one of the best villains you've ever seen in a film. But then once you've seen the movie, like, five times, after, like I have, you start to sort of poke some holes through everything. And uh, he becomes less cool. To me, at least. I, he's... It's not like a bad performance or anything. I still find the backstory I interesting. Um, and he's still probably a top 10, maybe top 15 Bond villain. Um, but, you know, maybe just a little bit overrated. But he's still solid and the twist is there. This is one of the very rare Bond films that has a major twist. And I can't really think of any other film that has as big of a twist in this until maybe Skyfall. Um, and No Time to Die probably as well. <clears throat> so, yeah, this is on the above average of the spectrum. It's got everything you like. It's, uh, you know, I like the Dalton movies, but we have to admit, <clears throat> License to Kill was maybe a little bit too serious for its own good. Uh, it was borderline unfun, you know? Like, uh, it was just kind of cruel and mean. And uh, Daniel Craig, while it's serious as well, it's not really cruel and mean. So, yeah, they course correct here. They go for a more lighter tone, but still like serious espionage business still. <laughs> just, you know, to, um, they, what I'm trying to say is they find a good mix, where Roger Moore is way too goofy for me, and Dalton, specifically Licensed to Kill, is way too serious. This is a nice mix, and Daniel Craig Air is a nice, nice mix as well. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think Craig and Brosnan Ayers both have nice mixes, and, uh, Brosnan leans slightly, maybe like 60% humor, and then Craig is like 60% serious, so they're both good in their own ways. Uh, but this movie has amazing stunts awesome action. There's rarely a dull moment. Uh, the gunfire and the, the gunplay, for lack of better words, is some of the series' best for sure, um, despite the fact that nobody can hit anyone. Um, but I just love the effects and everything. 
Uh, the locations they choose are awesome. I love the cinematography. There's some especially beautiful moments in this. I was trying to see if they were sitting in front of green screens, because I know in Die Another Day they use a lot of green screens, but I don't think they were using green screens in this. I think they were actually there. Um, and yeah, this is also Pierce Brosnan is the, la the lady's favorite as well. Uh, this is unanimously agreed upon. Um, all women basically agree that this is the most attractive Bond. Uh, so if you want to watch this with your girlfriend or whatever, I'm sure she'll appreciate it. Um, both as just a fun action film and, you know, Bond is an actor. So yeah, this is a good film. Um, to play Contrarian now, I'll say some negatives, which are basically... I felt there were quite a bit of holes to poke into uh, the secret villain's plan. It's, um, I don't know, his motivation was just a little bit weird for me. Uh, I don't want to spoil things, but it's, it's, it's a little bit childish, his motivation. So it's not exactly the scariest villain of them all. Um, and uh, also Boris. I absolutely hate Boris. Boris is the worst. The guy that goes, I am invincible. It's so bad. And what's even worse is uh, probably my least favorite thing about the Brosnan films in, a, like, in total is uh, the technology. It's, it's like it's in that 1995 Windows XP era, like era, right? So all of the computer stuff and all of, anything involving technology in this is just really cringe to look back on. Um, like you know when they in movies they'll be like to dumb it down for the audience that will say like hacking. 10%, 20%, 30% hacking. Well, they do things like that in this where they have like actual animated character icons of themselves on the on the computers. And also when Boris shakes his computer monitor because he's getting angry, it's like, bro, if you're such a computer whiz, you'd know that that's just a monitor, it's a display. You should be shaking your actual desktop. Okay, maybe I'm just looking too much into it, but like as someone who took um, like I don't, I never completed university, but I did go and I went for computer programming. Every time I watch these Brosnan films, I'm like, please stop. It's so cringe watching these computer programmers do their things. Um, another thing I want to say is that, uh, in my humble opinion, uh, Tina Turner's opening song, Goldeneye, Goldeneye, it's not for me. It's not my style of music at all. Uh, definitely going to be in my top four, five, three, yeah, maybe top four worst Bond songs. And that is quite important because um, the opening song, not only does it set the mood and tone for what to expect, um, but like compare The Man with the Golden Gun to Skyfall's opening uh, intros, both of those songs play are very important roles in the film's quality themselves. Um, and in this case, all Bond opening songs lay the foundation for the soundtrack going forward. And in my opinion, I think this is one of the weaker soundtracks. It's not terrible, but I do think it's one of the weaker ones, I would say, below half. Um, but yeah, one more positive thing I want to make mention to is Xenia on the top. Yes, that's her name. Um, she might be my single favorite henchman. She's easily the most memorable henchman. Uh, to give you an example, my mom has MS, which means she has a very hard time with memory. And uh, she walked by the TV when my dad and I were watching it, and she was like, on the top. And it's like... That is, that's so uncharacteristic for her to know the name of a random henchman in a movie she's only seen once. I was kind of bewildered, but I was too busy to watching to ask her. But yeah, uh, so if, if my NS mother can remember the name of a random henchman, you know she's memorable. So in my opinion, she might be the best and most, most, most memorable uh, henchman. She's basically this sadistic, bloodthirsty, hypersexual... Um, just like she's orgasming throughout this film like at one point Bond is in a tank and is going to derail the train that she's on and she just has this like huge smile on her face when she says oh my god I think he's gonna derail us like she's so excited so she's completely insane and I loved it so yeah it's these kind of performances that that do work you know these kind of overacting performances don't always work but in this case it did so Goldeneye I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10 it is a the first modern Bond film, in my opinion, it gives us Judy Dench's M and it gave us the Nintendo 64 GoldenEye 007 game, so how can you not like it, right? So 8 out of 10, definitely have to see GoldenEye.